I know we've talked about this before, but there really needs to be a different conversation around Nikola Jokic and the lack of foul calls that he gets. Now, they win the game. The Denver Nuggets beat the Orlando Magic by 10 points. Nikola Jokic has 26 points, 15 rebounds on 7 assists. But one of the things people will look at, they're going to see that he shot 10 of 26 from the field. He was 3 of 9 from the three-point line today. Now, if you take out those nine shots, that means that essentially he went 7 of 17 today. 7 of 17. That's not Nikola Jokic. Nikola Jokic is shooting 64% from two-pointers this year. So what happened? Wendell Carter Jr. figured out last season that when the Chicago Bulls played against the Denver Nuggets in Chicago, he figured out that he could foul the MVP of the NBA as much as he wants, and the refs are going to give him the benefit of the doubt because of his play style. What do you mean, Cam? Well, Michael Malone got a technical in Chicago because literally – Yoke got an and one. He did a hook shot with his right hand. Wendell Carter Jr. contested him body to body, chest to chest, had his right hand wrapped around Yoke's waist and contested him with his left hand and also hit his wrist. And the ref didn't call a single thing. And he did that the entire game. So Michael Malone finally lost his mind, screamed at the referee, got a technical. And the same thing happened today. Michael Malone was about to blow a gasket. He ran up to the referee, didn't get in his face in the same way, but he screamed at him. Y'all, when you look at this kind of shooting performance, 10 to 26, some of that is joke. But a lot of that is he took so many jump shots today because when he went into the paint, he was getting hounded. And he only had three free throws tonight. And Wendell Carter Jr. was literally on his back most of the game. Most of the game. Now, I get that Yoke could have an off night. But Wendell Carter Jr., Wendell Carter Jr. literally made it his business to get in his face to hound him every single possession. And again, this is the same thing that the L.A. Lakers did in the 2020 playoffs. Dwight Howard, JaVel McGee, LeBron James, Anthony Davis. Foul every play. Because once you set the tone that this is how you're going to be playing defense, the refs will let everything go from that point on. And that's exactly what's happening right now. Wendell Carter Jr. literally... He's making it his business to foul this man every play. He still gets 26, 15, and 7. But, man, it was so frustrating. Because every time he goes into the paint, we're having to wonder, like, bro, like, is he going to be able to get a foul, a fair whistle? And, again, maybe he needs to start falling a lot more. You know, I can't remember who it was. Uh, I can't remember who it was. But I remember I said on, on my Twitter a few games ago, you know, what is Joe going to have to start doing to start getting – because all the, the, all the MVP candidates – they all get foul calls. And the two that are most like him, in Joel Embiid and Giannis Antetokounmpo, they get more than 10 free throws a game. Nikola Jokic is still sitting at five. So what does he need to do? And somebody said he just needs to start fouling. Every time he gets hit, he needs to foul, fall. He needs to fall, sorry. Every time he gets hit, he needs to start falling down. Because he's going to have to do it. Because at this point, I'm watching Wendell do this, and I'm saying maybe he needs to yell and scream and like fall on the ground. Because that's going to be unacceptable. Because by playoff time, that's going to get really annoying, y'all. Again, ran over. The Denver Nuggets win the game. They win the game 121 to 111. It was a great, great game from Brent Forbes tonight. He had 16 points off the bench. He was 5 of 7 from the field, 3 of 4 from the three-point line, 3 of 3 from the free throw line. He was a plus 1 tonight. Like I explained last game, on the bench, if you're a plus 2 to a minus 2 on the bench, that's a good game. Plus two is a great game. Minus two is a good game. Because all you need to do is keep it close. And they did that. Tonight, Will Barton has 17 points and 7 rebounds on 6 of 11 shooting. 5 of 5 from the free throw line. He was a plus 8. Aaron Gordon had 10 points, 6 rebounds, and 3 assists. He was 4 of 6 from the field, 2 of 3 from 3. He was a plus 10. You know, had some boneheaded decisions in there. He only, he had, he had 5 turnovers. Which, again, for Aaron Gordon's a lot. For Nikola Jokic, it's not terrible. You don't love it. Aaron Gordon, that's a lot of turnovers. He had some, like, end-of-the-game turnovers where, and again, the Nuggets do this, man. Somebody said uh, on my Twitter, you know, the Nuggets are going to get killed by the Warriors uh, next game. And I'm like, you know what? No, honestly, that's a game they would win because that's a game they would be up for. That's a game they want to play. When they play against teams like the Magic, the reason they got beat by the Magic last time when the Magic, when they were up 16 points at the half in December, because when teams they know they can beat that aren't up to their talent level, they don't always take care of business because somehow, some way, like in their head, 
they don't make the decision to turn it on and to get it over with. They like to play with their food, I guess is the expression you could use. So tonight, man, you know, they were up 22 points. It was 40 to 18 at one point, gone all the way down to 12 points. And they kind of fought that all game. Get it down to 12, get it back up to 20. Get it down to 12, get it back up to 17. And they ended up winning by 10. So frustrating. You know, you like to see better, more consistent play from them from bad teams. Bones Highland had a good game. He had 29 minutes, 14 points, 5 rebounds, and 2 assists on 4 of 7 shooting. But 3 of 6 from the 3-point line. That was huge. 3 of 4 from the free throw line with 2 steals. He would have plus 13. He was, that's the best on the starters tonight. And he probably was the second best player on the court tonight. Um, you know, he was more efficient than Yoke was. But Yoke had to take 27 shots. But, yeah, man, like that was a really good game from him. Bones Highland in transition is lethal. The pull-up 3-pointers, he's lethal. He just makes like really quick decisions with the ball. I mean, you can see it. As he gets older and figures his game out, it's going to be a problem. Jeff Green tonight, 27 minutes, 17 points, 3 rebounds, and 3 assists. He was 6 of 12 from the field. Hit two really clutch 3-pointers tonight. 3 of 4 from the free throw line was attacking the basket. He was a plus 9 as well. When Jeff Green is cutting, when he has his energy and his legs underneath him, he's a big asset. In the playoffs, he can have a really, really important role with this team, man. So he played really well tonight. Like I said, Bryn Forbes shot the lights out, 5 of 7. He was a plus 1 tonight. Facundo Campazzo had 5 points, 2 rebounds, and 5 assists on 1 of 3 of shooting, which is 1 of 3 from the 3-point line. He was 2 of 2 from the free throw line. He was a minus 3, just outside of that range I gave y'all. Plus 2, minus 2. He had some good moments today. You know, he missed his first 3-pointer. Uh, he did make another 3-pointer today. Uh, I want to say Faku has made 6 3-pointers in the last 3 games, I want to say. Something like that. Uh, but the two, the other two men I really want to talk about, Jermichael Green and Boogie Cousins. Tonight, Jermichael Green had 7.7 rebounds on 3 of 7 shooting, 1 and 1 from 3 point line. And he was even. He was a 0 tonight. Even in the plus minus. Jermichael Green, there was a point where the magic on the second unit, they were trying to like run the like this zone type look. Uh, or they were in man to man, but they were fronting Boogie Cousins because Boogie was giving them a lot of problems. So he literally would just go up to the top of the key right where the free throw line was. He had a dump off the boogie. He also hit a mid-range there. Made some really good decisions, man. Jermichael Green played well today. Seven rebounds. You can live with that. Austin Rivers, zero points. Two rebounds, two assists. All three from the field with two steals. He was also a plus two. Played really good defense tonight. Uh, but Boogie Cousins, man, nine points, five rebounds. The Nuggets are now 7-0 and with Boogie Cousins. That's not a small sample size anymore. 3 of 6 from the field, 1 of 4 from the 3-point line, 2 of 2 from the free throw line. Again, what did I say? By scale, plus 2, minus 2, he was a plus 3 tonight. He was the best bench player they had from a plus minus standpoint. Boogie Cousins, those 9 points were huge. He had a major banger of a dunk tonight, too. Huge dunk. And again, it's 3 of 6 from the field. You can live at 50%. So, Boogie gets in the game, man, and he's so physical. He's such a strong person that he literally makes it impossible for the defense to leave him alone. And then when he goes back on the defensive boards, he clears out bodies because people just don't want to bang with him because of how big he is. Again, like I said, I don't think you can upgrade from what the center position is right now. I don't think there's a free agent out there that you could go and sign on a minimum. I think Boogie Cousins is it, man. Again, you're 7-0 and with the games he's played. You have another great test uh, in, on, on Wednesday against the Golden State Warriors and have an opportunity to get a, a key win before the All-Star break. Again, I think Boogie can play a serious role in that, for real. So, great job by Boogie Cousins tonight. Uh, the Denver Nuggets shot 47% from the field, 40% from the three-point line, 91% from the free throw line on 21 to 23, but they had 22 turnovers and only 25 assists. That is a one-to-one -one assist to turnover ratio. Terrible. They also won the rebounding battle, 52 rebounds and 12 offensive boards or 42 rebounds and 11 offensive boards. They had two blocks, but they had – in the Orlando Magic tonight had a season-high 16 steals, which goes to show you how sloppy the Nuggets were playing. And they do this against bad teams. The Orlando Magic had a season-high 16 steals. So, again, it goes to show you, man, the Nuggets just play really sloppy versus bad teams like this. The good news is they won. That's the most important thing. The Denver Nuggets are, are now one game behind the Dallas Mavericks for the five seed because they lost one, they, and the Denver Nuggets have won two in a row. They're now two games ahead of the Timberwolves for the seventh seed, and they are, shoot, four and a half games ahead of the Clippers for the eighth seed. 
So making room between them and the play-in, but also with the Mavericks, man, I think, again, the Mavericks, they lose another game. They beat the Warriors. You're in the fifth seed leading into the All-Star break, which is literally the best-case scenario uh, because the Utah Jazz won tonight and they're four games behind the Jazz and exactly four losses behind the Jazz as well. So, y'all, that's going to do it for this episode. Hit that subscribe button. Let's grow the channel. Let's get to 9,000 subscribers by the All-Star break. Let's get to the All-Star game. 9,000 subscribers by the end of the All-Star break. I know we can do it. Let's go ahead and get it done, y'all. Swipe the gang. I'm going to see y'all soon.